So the folks at Zumwalt Acres asked me to speak on what I think are some of the more exciting and um, innovative ways of getting to more resilience and sustainability on the ag landscape. And my answer to that is that I'm excited about increasing biodiversity on the landscape. Agroforestry is one of the most effective tools we have to combat climate change. Project Drawdown listed among the top 10 solutions to climate change, and the IPCC has identified the Midwest as a target region for its adoption. When we think of agroforestry and carbon drawdown, we often think of carbon sequestration in the soil through the use of perennial cropping systems, through the integration of livestock with trees, and the holistic management that comes from managing agricultural systems that are based on the ecosystem around them and not on prescribed set of practices for the most and maximum yield. But what's often not brought into this is the social aspect of carbon drawdown. When we create agricultural systems that are based on the ecosystem, which does include humans, that must also include labor sources, value adding and processing of perennial and, and agroforestry crops, as well as good markets for people to access, afford and utilize those products. I think one of the biggest misconceptions that people have about forestry and forest management is that cutting down trees and logging is inherently bad. We have all seen photos and videos of poorly managed logging and it's caused many of us to kind of have a black and white or pretty bleak view of what forest management is or can be. Sustainably done forest management actually has the capacity to increase carbon stocks, improve wildlife habitat and forest health and mitigate disturbance risks such as fire susceptibility. Many foresters and loggers actually have really immense knowledge and respect for nature and forests and they work as stewards on the landscape. And my wish is really for better communication and partnerships between loggers and foresters and conservation groups so that they can work together to try to figure out what they've got in common and work for greater good so we have less land converted from forests into other types of land use which would be less sustainable over the long term. It's important to know that Tree crops like hazelnuts and chestnuts can sequester nearly a ton of carbon per acre in woody biomass over the first five years. And that scales to 10 times that at maturity. So there's huge potential in agroforestry to address climate change here in the Midwest, in addition to the benefits that agroforestry can offer for diversifying farm income, offering ecosystem services and to uh, providing an important uh, avenue for land access. Projects like Zumwalt Acres that pair the tool agroforestry with a target region, the Midwest, have the potential to have a sort of exponential impact. Within the Midwest alone, uh, about sort of looking broadly, we found that about 23% of Midwest farmland currently in corn and soybeans would make more money if it were converted to agroforestry. And what happens is if you do that, if you convert that roughly 84 million acres to the currently in corn and soybeans on marginal land to agroforestry, then you could sequester up to 30% of the annual US CO2 emissions in woody biomass alone. In my experience, one of the biggest misconceptions people have about agroforestry is just that it isn't happening. So I can't tell you how many times I've been to a meeting where an extension agent has uh, been talking to a group of farmers and has laid out the benefits. But, you know, at each of these meetings, I hear those benefits you know, someone says, oh, well, there are tons of benefits, but, you know, no one does that. Let's talk about cover crops and they sort of pivot to other practices. So when we think of agroforestry here in Illinois, I don't only think of putting trees into fields or helping farmers plant windbreaks or hedgerows or incorporating silvopasture systems. I also think of the social landscape and the ways that we have the ability to reimagine and recreate what that looks like. Here in rural central Illinois, we have a suck of people from our rural areas. And this is due to a lot of factors that go beyond just agriculture. 
But the huge consolidation of agriculture and the huge shift to industrial style, large scale agriculture has created a flight from our small communities and rural areas. Because of this, now tracts of land and communities that were once thriving are sitting empty for most of the winter and are filled with commodity crops during the growing season. And I'm speaking in front of this background here because I want to tell you a story. Um, when I flew out of Willard Airport in Champaign-Urbana on June 2nd of 2019, this is what it looked like out my window. And you can see you know, acres and acres of land that has nothing growing on it um, because across the millions of acres of production ground in Illinois and the upper Midwest, a lot of it is planted to corn and soybean, which are both summer annual crops. June 2019 was the end of a very long, rainy and cold spring in the upper Midwest of the US. And we couldn't get our crops in. And the only things that you see growing on the landscape are winter annual weeds right here, this yellow thing. And then you can see some grass and some trees over here. So thinking about how to build biological bet hedging into the ag landscape is really important to me. And I think that agroforestry is an interesting route to doing that. Uh, agroforestry allows you to combine crops and animals and trees and any kind of combination you want to achieve uh, particular goals. This is the way that we could begin spot treating parts of this landscape with other types of vegetation and more diverse agroecosystems that would build biological bet hedging into the agricultural landscape. One of the things that we think needs to happen is simply to have demonstration sites, accessible demonstration sites everywhere, at least one in every county, you know, in an ideal world, so that we can help people see what commercial scale agroforestry can look like because when it comes right down to it, unless you can see it, it's hard to imagine doing that. I think one of the most important things that you can do is get to know the local producers in your area and um, how to buy their products. Uh, in order to diversify our ag landscape, we need to provide a market signal for people to produce more diverse products and add biodiversity. So by either joining a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, or going to a farmer's market, or buying directly from a local producer, you're helping support some of this biodiversity. And then finally, getting to know your elected rep representatives and where they stand on agriculture and making your voice heard. So if you're an individual who's looking to support planting trees or just trees and forests generally on Tubishvat or beyond, I want you to look locally, right? It's really common for people to donate money to plant a tree in Israel, or maybe you go and buy a tree and plant it in your yard. Um, but there are so many other things you can do that don't necessarily involve mon paying money um, or having it go kind of away. And I really think it's important um, if you're volunteering and giving time and you're building local relationships, both with these organizations and also with the land that you live on or near, that's really the greatest way that we can care for the earth. Prior to tree selection, the single best thing you can do is assess the landscape where the tree will be installed. Ask yourself, is this soil capable of supporting a tree? Do you know the site history? Has it undergone recent construction or other modifications that are not typical of a tree's habit? Large parts of our urban environment are plagued with physically degraded soils and could benefit from the incorporation of biochar or compost to create pockets of organic matter, thus aiding in water retention while suppressing recompaction. Some of the most degraded soils can support a healthy tree if proper remediation is done prior to planting. Providing a better rooting environment for a tree is likely the best solution for improving our forest canopy. When I think of what a future looks like that is more carbon neutral and is sustainable in ways that go beyond just agricultural land use, water and air, I think of communities that are thriving, that are full of people that are able to access what they need where they are, both in terms of food, which is huge because Illinois imports 90% of all the food we eat here, but also be able to access the services that they need where they are. 
when we're able to access the things that we need, we don't have to rely on a carbon heavy world to make it happen. So when I think 50 years, 100 years, way beyond where I'm gone here in Illinois, not only do I see trees across the, across the landscape, but I see thriving businesses. I see thriving families. I see thriving healthcare and educational systems that are spurred in part by the work of agroforestry and types of agriculture that regenerate our planet. So agroforestry is incredibly hopeful in so many ways and incredibly powerful, not only in its carbon drawdown, but in its radical, radical reimagining of landscapes. Most of the farmers and folks that I interact with are very hesitant about putting trees in the ground because it is a long-term commitment. But is that not what this movement needs, is long-term commitment, not only to the work of reimagining, but the work of reworking.